Hello and welcome to another mystery box challenge. This time it's our normal home cook Barry's turn to see if he can beat our chef, Ben. We've challenged them to create a dish celebrating an amazing mystery ingredient. And this is them finding it out. Olives. Get in. Okay, right. And oil. So, olives. Olive oil. Olive oil. Cheers. We use that a lot. We could do something cool with that. Mm. So ahead of the battle, we thought we'd send them on a journey to learn everything they can about olives, how they're farmed, and how to get the most out of them in their dishes. Starting with Costas, an olive farmer in Greece. Can you better, Ben? Can you better, buddy? Now, my first question is, how do you farm olives? Εμείς καλλιεργούμε τη νελιά με έναν τρόπο παραδοσιακό που έχουμε αποκτήσει τόσα χρόνια με προσωπική εμπειρία δικιά μου και συμβουλών που παίρνουμε μέσα του γεωπόνου της Μολών Λαβέ και των εταιριών που συνεργαζόμαστε. So Costas, what type of olives do you grow on your farm? Εδώ στην περιοχή καλλιεργούμε την τοπική ποικιλία της Αθηνοελιάς. Αυτή την ποικιλία καλλιεργώ και εγώ. And the local variety, Athenoia olive that you grow, what are the characteristics? What, what's its flavour like? It's fruitless, it has plusia characteristics, a lafros picadico, and it has excellent aromata. So, growing olives in Greece, what is it that makes the area so perfect in terms of its conditions? Κάνει κατάλληλο και δανεικό μέρο η καλλιέργεια τη ελιά στην Ελλάδα, γιατί είναι το έδαφο και οι κλιματολογικέ συνθήκε που επικρατούν σε αυτή τη χώρα. Όλη η παραδοσιακή ελαιόν μα είναι σε κάποια κλίση ώστε δεν υπάρχει σχετική υγρασία στην ατμόσφαιρα υψηλή ώστε να επηρεάζει τον νερό καρπο. So what sort of challenges do you face as an olive farmer then? Οι μεγαλύτερες προκλήσεις θα έλεγα είναι οφείλω στην κλιματική αλλαγή, στην έλλειψη νερού και από εκεί και πέρα είναι και το κόστος παραγωγής που μπορούμε να τα αναλύσουμε σε κόστος για την ελοσυλλογή, σε κόστος για την ενέργεια για την λύπανση και για τη φυτοπροστασία του ελαιοδέντρου. Next, the guy spoke to Mariana from BASF to learn more about how farmers and the agriculture industry are working together to increase sustainability in their production. Now, speaking to Costas, it sounds like as a farmer there's lots of things to juggle, but what's one of the biggest challenges of olive farming today? One of them is for sure uh, that we're growing population. I would say that another one is that we have very finite natural resources and we have to make the most um, out of those for a growing population. And of course the whole topic of climate change I think is uh, very important as well because slowly you're beginning to have more uh, extreme and adverse uh, weather conditions that are very quickly interchanging between each other so that's affecting disease and, and pest as well. But of course the, the important thing is that we're, we're here to I think uh, work together to find a solution and we have to be optimistic uh, with, with science about the future and innovation. This is what also the part of uh, the BSF farm network is about, because we realize we can't do things alone. So you have to find the right partnerships to be able to make a difference. Next up, we sent the boys to Borough Market to meet Mariana from Oliveology. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Let's meet you. I'm Ben. This is Barry. Welcome to Oliveology. Nice to meet you. We're going to do some olive oil tasting today. But first, we're going to cleanse your palate with some olive leaf tea. Yes! Olive tea? Olive leaf tea, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Olive oil and olives are one of the key ingredients of the Greek diet. Everybody in Greece uses extra virgin olive oil for absolutely everything, from salads to um, roasting, grilling. And the Mediterranean diet is phenomenal. They are one of the healthiest nations, absolutely, and beca it's because they consume so much olive oil and olives. Actually, our consumption is approximately 25 liters per person per year. So it's like a bathtub. <laughs> Sorry, <what? laughs> All of the olives have been hand-picked, hand-selected, transported to the olive press within a few hours of being picked, um, pressed at a really, really cold temperature, as low as 18 degrees, which is extremely low because you get so little yield compared to what you would have if you used temperatures up to 27 degrees. Um, the olive oils are unfiltered and then they are bottled in these metal containers to protect them from light and heat. So your farms are all organic and you don't use 
pesticides. What do you do to get around the pest problem? Climate change uh, has been really challenging for our producers because um, the changes in weather conditions have encouraged a lot of pests. Um, obviously the olive fly is one of the most common pests but the, there are also about 30 more um, insects, viruses and other types of diseases that have developed um, over the last couple of years. Sometimes, for example, you use um, insects like ladybirds because ladybirds, they, uh, they like to eat other types of insects that are very damaging to the olive fruit. Or you to try to work with nature. So the biodiversity is important. Absolutely, absolutely. Having learned about the struggles conventional and organic olive farmers face, it's essential both guys create dishes that will really get the best out of this incredible oil. Everyone happy? Everyone excited? I think so. I mean, yes. Yes, I am. That was nervous excitement if ever I've seen it. <laughs> Lads, your time starts in three, two, one, go. I'm going back to basics, as traditional as I think is possible from the studio, I'm gonna do a meze platter with some phenomenal olive oil bread to dip into a homemade taramasalata and on the side, dolma, which is vine leaves wrapped around citrusy, herby rice. Every element celebrates the olive tree. So the bread dough is using double zero flour, so it's like halfway between strong flour and plain flour, yeast, salt, but the key here is lots of the olive oil. So it goes into the dough and then later on as you bake it, it gets fried almost in the oven in more olive oil. This is gonna be so chilled today. It's just, there's a few things that are time sensitive. There's a few things that take a while, but there's no stress. What are you making, Baz? Are you ready for this? Because I'm not sure I am. <laughs> I am making a olive oil ice cream sundae. It's got olive oil ice cream and chocolate ice cream with a chocolate chip focaccia and some delicious olive jam. Oh, not forgetting, some honey feta on top as well. It will all make sense. Just trust and go with me. What I've done is I've whipped up a very basic ice cream base, which is double cream, condensed milk and vanilla. Then I'm splitting that into two and flavoring one with dark chocolate and oregano. And the other half, I'm lacing it with olive oil. Ebers, what do you think of that? I think putting herbs into savoury dishes is awesome and sensible. Putting it into sweet dishes is on the cusp. Putting it in chocolate is really nice. I've never heard of oregano in dark chocolate. Right, now, I'm not using the word hypocritical lightly, but can I take you back to the last time I was in one of these videos and I said, tomatoes work really well with basil, which works really well with ricotta. <laughs> I'm gonna make a ricotta cheesecake. And Baz, I think what you said was, it sounds like a salad. <laughs> Yours sounds a lot like a salad. A nice, soft, squidgy dough. I'm gonna leave that for a prove of about an hour in this lovely warm studio. In a generous glug of olive oil, I have sweated off white onion, diced, spring onion, and garlic. And now I'm adding in short grain Carolina rice. So it's a Greek grain. Toast that off, equal amount of water, cook it for about six minutes with the lid on. That's not enough water for short grain rice to cook, and that's not enough time because I'm gonna give it six minutes. But that's okay, because we're not fully cooking it, we're just starting the cooking process. The finish happens inside the vine leaves, inside of an olive oil broth. Cottage cheese, what are you doing with that? Shut up! Oh, that's looking pretty grim. Interesting you're splitting it before you've kind of perfected it. It's not pastry, you can't overwork it, Baz. Yeah, but you can knock the air out, can't you? That is going to be an indulgent ice cream. Yeah, you're right, there's a lot of olive oil in this, and I think this is where picking Mariana's 22 degrees olive oil is really important because it was the most peppery of all of them. It tasted, it was probably one of the strongest for me, one of my favourites, and it tasted the most of olives. I think that's really important in this ice cream because it has to taste of olive oil. Looks a bit lumpy, Baz. Yeah, does it matter? Do you want to whisk it out? It or? No, it doesn't matter. He's not corrected it. I don't understand why he's not correcting it. It's not hard to correct either, is it? He's putting fresh oregano in that as well. Okay, we're going into some trays and into a freezer. 
dill, mint, parsley, finely chopped up and then added to the cooled rice with lemon zest and heavy seasoning salt and pepper. Now the challenge here is to taste this and make sure it's herby enough, lemony enough, seasoned enough, despite the fact the rice is not even half cooked. So what I love about this dish is that, yes, there's lots of olive oil to start cooking out the onion, the garlic and the rice, but then once they're wrapped, they're cooked in an olive oil broth. So the base of the pan, vine leaves, lemon slices and olive oil, and then we can roll them. He's adding chocolate chips into that focaccia dough. This needs to knead for about 10 minutes. Should I roast some feta and honey? Why the hell not? What I've done is bought vine leaves that have already been blanched and salted, and then I've just picked them apart, and we're going to use those to roll up burrito style, dolma style. Very tempting to overfill these, but remember the rice is only half cooked and they're going to expand again inside of the dolma leaves. Right, and that is my focaccia dough. It's been kneading for 10 minutes. It's laced with olive oil and chocolate chips. Um, I now need to cover this and let it prove for 90 minutes. Baz, interesting that you've gone for focaccia with a Greek olive oil. Italian bread with a Greek olive oil. <laughs> there is a Greek version of focaccia. Yeah, it's what I'm making. Oh. Uh, well, at least one of them is going to be good. Oh. How do you know? Because I love chocolate chips. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> now, this has proved it's going to go onto an oiled tray. I'm then going to put finger holes into it and let that prove for a further 30 minutes. Listening to him struggle through a bread recipe, it's, it's painful. Marianne did say it's good for moisturising, didn't they, as well? Yeah, if you're wearing PPE, you should give Ben a massage. With them all wrapped up, I've wedged them into and onto the vine leaf and lemon base. Then the olive oil, a couple of plates to weigh it down and topped up with water. So that's now going to heat and simmer for about 40 minutes. That will allow the rest of the risotto rice to cook out, they'll plump out, and they'll take on more of that wonderful lemon and olive oil broth. The final part, the taramasalata, I've got plenty of time to get right. The topping for my bread is half cherry tomatoes, pitted Kalamata olives, and fresh oregano. Now, we were told that a pitted olive isn't gonna be as tasty as a non-pitted one, but for the bread, I think it's the best way, because you're eating the bread, you don't necessarily want to have the pits in the middle, and they are gonna cook out anyway. Why is it hot? I don't know, something. Well, we've been proving that in a nice warm place. <laughs> so to get this bread done in three hours, you want a nice, warm proof. Um, turns out mine's been on the hob, um, <laughs> which was just on the very low heat. So um, Crispy bottom though, right? Yours is traditional, but not something we have very often over here. I love taramaslata, but I don't think this is going to be the sweet pink gloop you find in the supermarket. This is like proper authentic taramaslata. You hearing that? Absolutely. He's telling you what to taste. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> The dough at this point is super pillowy. Knock it back and then I'm going to place it into our heavily oiled pan. And I've chosen the 18 degrees centigrade uh, extraction, kind of the midway extraction. It's cold enough to get all of the herbaceous elements out of the olives, but warm enough to get some of the fruitiness too. So it's a riper olive at a cooler temperature. It's good logic that I've tried that olive oil and it's delicious. On this occasion, he's telling the truth. <laughs> As if I wasn't already out of my comfort zone, um, I'm now going to attempt to make a, um, a jam, an olive jam. It, I think it makes sense. Yes, starting with olives is a bit weird, but then it goes with apple, orange, sugar, and some water. Let it reduce down into a thick, thick jam, and then I'm gonna add some dolce de leche to some of it. Wow. Like all the rest of us, this will take you on a journey. This next dip. I've been on some journeys that I found really boring, Ebbers. <laughs> <laughs> when I was thinking about uses of olive oil, mayonnaise cropped up as being one, or the emulsification of the sauce. And that's why I kind of chose to do this, because it's heavy on olive oil, but that emulsifies with bread and all the other ingredients to end up with a thick dip. This sounds right up my alley. The only problem is the other ingredients are soggy bread, onion water and fish eggs. I'd like to retract my earlier statement. I've grated half a red onion and a clove of garlic into a tea towel and then squeeze out the liquid. And that's the onion water. 
Soggy bread. As cooking process goes, this doesn't, doesn't, it's not an obvious one, is it? As a normal, if I was reading that recipe, I'd think there's something up here. I think there's something up as a normal reading your recipe. Hey! There you go. How's your cheese and honey? That looks great. <laughs> He's got away with that. Whew. It's now got to cool. This is some of the lovely smoked cod's row that I picked up at Borough Market. Going to use that, blend it up with the bread that's soggy, the water that's onion and garlicky, and then when it's a paste, dribble in the olive oil a little bit at a time. And again, I'm going for the 18 degrees Celsius, so it is peppery and herbaceous, but also fruity. Then we season it with lemon zest, juice, salt and pepper. Barry, while you wait, tell me why you're using the type of olives that you're using for your jam. For the jam, well, the darker olives are sweeter than green olives. But I wasn't expecting him to answer that, mm -hmm. and he, that's a great answer. Bread needs a bit of a poke, and then I'm gonna push in cherry tomatoes, olives, oregano, drizzle over loads more olive oil, sea salt, and bake 200 degrees Celsius until it's cooked, about 20 minutes. This is so fishy. It's been six minutes and Barry's still washing the blender up to get rid of the fishy smell. Oh Olive oil on top, bit of salt, some derivera, derivera, how do you say it? Derivera, sugar on top of that, into the oven, 30 minutes. These olive leaves make wonderful tea, very, very cleansing and refreshing, but I'm actually just gonna use them as garnish around the plate as another nod to olive, and I'm also gonna serve it inside an olive wood spoon. While Ben wasn't looking, I sneaked off the catcher in the oven. The bread is nice and golden. It's going to cool up on a wire rack. Mine has also just come out of the oven. Um, I think it's done. Looks done. One bit is definitely done. I, yeah, I, okay, one side of the oven is slightly hotter than the rest. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to start slicing this sooner than I'd like. And so it cools quicker. And if that's not quick enough, it might have to go to the fridge. The problem with ice cream sundaes is they always look good, whereas mine's gonna be a bit more rustic and mezze platter style. Traditional, yes, but up against a sundae, will it get the popularity vote? Guys, you have about two minutes to plate up. This drizzling syrup is not drizzling. 15 seconds remaining. Oh, even Ben's got a wiggle on now. The olive oil. The I know, oil. I know. Five, four, three, two. Get out of my fingers. One. Step away from your olives. Good finishing oil. Delightful. Well, these look great. You've got a tough job. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, mate. Ben, yours is extraordinary. <laughs> it's a celebration of I shoehorned Olive in everywhere I could. It's a spoon, right? Yeah. It's yeah. a spoon. Oh, 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 the spoon. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird, you're saying you're spooning from a spoon. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. It, it does look very impressive. Despite the spoon, it looks great. <laughs> you want a seat in my taverna, right? The vine leaves look great, don't yeah. they? Th these look super professional. Cheers. Cheers. For something that has so much olive oil in it, it doesn't feel greasy at mm. all. The bread feels really light. The leaves are greasy, but in a really good way. Like they're saturated with that oil and you can really taste the citrus as well. They are easily the standout of that dish. And then the bread, really good. Terra salata. It's not fishy at all. Mm. Or I can't taste much fish. It's just very creamy. And it's it's kind of got, it's got a lot of flavor. I, I, I guess maybe it's more olive oily than, than fishy almost. It's a strong dish to start. I'm looking forward to dessert though. Do you wanna 
Might take a bit, take, take, a take a bit and pass it on. Try and get a little bit of everything going on. So this is the olive oil ice cream sundae. You've got olive oil ice cream, you've got chocolate and oregano ice cream. You also have chocolate focaccia and a olive jam. I mean, you know I like weird desserts. You know I like savoury desserts. So you've played some my taste buds and it looks fantastic. Cheers. Cheers. The bread does the cookie dough thing, mm. and the sweet, salty combo of olive, feta, and all of the rest of the stuff it is like a sort of caramel esque. It is pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love the olive ice cream. Mm. It feel, to me, it feels a little quite subtle, mm -hmm. but it's just got kind of that olive undertone. And if you have it on its own, it's, it's a bit weird. If you have it with the olive jam, it's really weird. But then when you have it with the dark chocolate, Mm. Suddenly it all starts coming together. Um, and the feta, I really love the feta. I love like the little kind of bonds of salt. The bread is delicious, but it's a little bit weird on a Sunday. The brief was to celebrate olives and olive oil. I think I have a winner. And my winner is... My winner is Evers. Yeah. Condition won it with a wobbly spoon! So I really thought that! And I, I want to just make sure this is clear, despite the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good yours was. Oh. It was it was the vine leaves. It, it was those <clears throat> being cooked in the olive oil just just absolutely nailed it. Well, thank you to everybody in BASF's team in Greece for setting us this amazing challenge and also helping us learn so much about olive oil and where it comes from. And talking of learning more, if you want to see Barry and I ask the experts more of your questions, then click in the link below and you can see the behind the scenes video. And if you liked this series of Beat the Chefs, give this video a like and we'll see if we can do some more. And one day, we actually might beat the flipping chef. One day. Have another dorma. It's so tempting right now just to like flick the switch, right? Oh, it is a little bit. Uh, mind my trousers. <laughs> going out this evening. He's not going out this evening. <laughs>